national government thinks they're going to fix our education. They held the party's annual conference in Auckland yesterday. Prime Minister Chris Luxon launched the Make It Count Maths Action Plan. They will take effect from term one next year, not far away. We're already churning through the year. Uh, the proposed changes will also come on the heels of an announcement in May by the government that all state schools would teach reading using a structured literacy approach. Well, now it's set to roll out new workbooks, teacher guides and other resources aligned to the new curriculum in a bid to boost flagging achievement levels. $20 million has been ring-fenced for professional development on structured maths for primary and intermediate teachers. Going forward, any candidates for teacher training programs will need to pass NCEA Level 2 Maths. Luxon says from next year, students also will be assessed twice a year on the new math curriculum. New data shows that last year, just 22% of year eight students were at the expected curriculum level for mathematics. Three in five kids are apparently more than a year behind. So an education academic is questioning the timing of the government's plans with changes for teachers coming in thick and fast. Massey University's mathematics education lecturer is Professor Jody Hunter, and she joins me now. Jody, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for your time, Jody. Now, there are a few parts of this that, that concern you. Can we start with the Curriculum Insights and Progress Study, or SIPS? This was used by the government that showed only apparently one in five children in year eight are working at the appropriate curriculum level. Doesn't that say something has to be done, or do you find this data a bit curious? I do find the data quite curious, to be honest, because I think it contradicts our previous national and international studies. So we've had NMSSA, TIMS, PISA, which are all very credible international studies and national studies, which have shown achievement, not great, but still mm. around double what is being said yesterday. And what mm. concerns me here is that this data, which the Prime Minister and the Education Minister are stating shows only 22% of students are working at or above the expected curriculum level. Mm. This data hasn't been released publicly. So we're seeing assertions and decisions being made and rolled out on data that's not subject to public scrutiny. Okay. Well, the curriculum, as you've just said, hasn't been consulted on by the sector. So nobody has seen this apart from people working at the ministry. I suppose that is that also a bit of a concern? Yep, that's a concern as well. And I mean, it also draws into question because um, the implication given yesterday was that this data showing 22% of students are working at this curriculum level was based on the new curriculum, which hasn't yet been released and isn't being taught yet. So it, mm. it begs the question as to why you would be assessing students on a curriculum that teachers haven't yet seen and aren't <laughs> teaching. Okay. Um, and also, is the time period a bit tight? I mean, the government expects this all to change for the term one, first term next year, and that's a lot to throw at teachers. Will they be up to speed by then? Absolutely. I think that it's going to create a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on our teachers who are already grappling with other changes in the education system. Mm. So we've already seen changes um, discussed and um, mandating of structured literacy and professional development related to that. And to then expect a complete change in terms of mathematics teaching, I think is really putting a difficult ask on our, on our profession who has had a difficult number of years with COVID, um, you know, with the kind of increase in um, illnesses since COVID and student absenteeism, behavioural issues that we can see sometimes with children having had the time off school that they had during that period. So, uh, yeah, I do think it's quite a big ask for our, our teaching profession to be throwing another change very rapidly at them. So the government says teachers will get the training they need. They've got 20 mil to put towards it. I suppose any moves, though, to enhance professional development is a positive step, wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, it's great to see money being put towards professional development, but then again, I also question what is this professional development going to consist of? Um, how, uh, how is this being tested? You know, how are we going to know that this is in fact going to work for the children and the students mm. in New Zealand? So, then if we haven't seen the curriculum yet, is it, what do you make of then the students being assessed twice a year 
on this new maths curriculum. Is that kind of standard practice? Well, yeah, it was kind of an interesting announcement because I think schools, in fact, many schools already assess more than twice a year in mathematics. Um, mm. We have, you know, it depends what you're talking about in assessment, but we have teachers who are consistently doing formative assessment. But most schools already are using PATs, which is one of the um, recommended or I'm not sure if it's mandated or recommended forms of assessment by the is government. Is that for duty? So, Sorry? Um, progressive achievement tests. I guess, right. Okay. Um, yeah, so, and also the other one was the ESTL. But um, I think the statistics given were that 90% of schools were already using PATs as part of a regular assessment program. So okay. it's not such a big shift, really, to, yeah. to and, any school. Uh, speak, speaking of the curriculum, every child will be learning maths based on, they've, they've called it a new world-leading knowledge rich math curriculum uh similar to those they've, they've um, highlighted singapore and australia what do you know about say those two countries and the way they teach well so singapore doesn't teach in the direct instruction the explicit instruction um indication that we've been given in fact singapore teaches using a problem-based curriculum so i oh. can't, found it quite interesting to say that it's based on this but yet we're saying do it this way. And also Australia is an interesting example here because Australia, I'm not quite sure what particularly has been talked about because Australia state to state has different curriculum being used and different teaching methods depending on oh. what state you're in. So again, mm. it's quite confusing to, to hear that. I'm not sure if it's referencing the content of the curriculum or the ways of teaching. So I know that often when we develop a curriculum and I've been involved, I was involved in developing the maths curriculum refresh, which has now been refreshed again. Oh. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so when I was involved in, in um, developing the mathematics curriculum refresh, we did reference quite strongly other countries such as Singapore and the Australian national curriculum to look mm. at what the expectations are in those countries. But, but that was work that was all previously done before the change of the government. Right. So, well, if you've been, Jody, obviously you've been very hands-on in the past with this. What what do you believe? I'm sure, and I'm sure there is no one silver bullet, but what do you believe needs to happen then to boost flagging achievement levels? I absolutely do believe that we need to have comprehensive professional development for our teachers. Mm. Um, I think that we also do need to look at local solutions. So we have a lot of good examples of excellent practice in New Zealand and schools which are accelerating the achievement of Māori and Pacific learners because I think that's an area which really needs attention. Um, I think we need to look at what what is working already and develop off that, but I'm not sure that you can do this in such a hurry and expect to get great results. Um, mm. Professional learning and development and change in education, it takes time, but it also we want to do it in a way, I think we should be doing it in a way, where we're regularly monitoring what's going on, not rolling out something that's untested in a really hurried way.